and welcome to Round Robin. I'm your host, Robin McCormick, with the City of Hampton's Communications and Marketing Department. And today we're going to talk about families and how we can be better parents and better relationship. Um, my guest today, I, I want you to meet, and it's someone you're going to be seeing around uh, monthly or so. It's Alvian Lyons. Welcome. Good morning. Tell us a little bit about yourself. You came to the city's attention because you spoke out at, at an anti-youth violence rally where hundreds of people from the community came together Absolutely. and not just said what is the problem but what can we do and right. you had some ideas what is the solution right. was the question because it's it's one thing to be able to share what the problem is but we can all sit around and complain absolutely and and there are lots of things that we could complain about but mm -hmm. the reality is that we're far more effective together when we're looking at what the solution can be and no one of us is as brilliant as all of us collectively so being able to get together and talk about that was a wonderful, wonderful opportunity. And there was so much that was shared. So it was just, we got a limited amount of time to talk about what we thought we could add to the process. And I didn't want to pass that up. So, yeah. so I got up there and I shared a few things and it was good, it was very good. And you have a background as a mom, as a counselor, as a consultant. Absolutely, and a wife. Uh, 20 oh. years in, you know, we've got to get credit for that. That's, so almost yeah. 20 years in at this point. It's hard point. to juggle all of those things. Oh, it is, especially for women. You know, all the hats that we wear on a regular basis, trying to balance those effectively, it's not, it's not anything short of acrobatics. Yeah. It requires a bit. But yes, I have a background in counseling. So I have a, a bachelor's degree in psychology, a master's degree in education with a focus on school counseling, and then I'm finishing my PhD in advanced studies in human behavior. Oh, holy yeah. cow. Yeah. Now, I'm going to say all those things <laughs> tie in very neatly to our topic today, which is stress. Yes, indeed. <laughs> how, how, oh. do you, you know, how do you juggle all of that? And, and what tips do you have for the rest of us? Well, the biggest thing, I think, for us, particularly as moms, that tends to be the weightiest of all the responsibilities. Everything else you could put on hold on occasion. You know, I could do the paper later on. I can make the phone call a few minutes later. But when your kids need you, they need you and we don't get the opportunity to just kind of push that off to the side. So the thing that I found most effective is developing effective systems of structure within our household. And we have a few that have saved my life many times. So I, if, if you're ready, I, we could start going through. Let's go, I need these tips, let's start right now. <laughs> and they work from when your kids are little to when they're big. So I have a 12 year old boy, a 17 year old girl and an 18 year old girl. So I've got the gamut going on at well, home. And let's just start with the fact that you think maybe, and when you hear a topic like parenting, mm -hmm. you automatically think people with little kids. Right, and not that, true. That before you've experienced it, you think those demands are gonna get less when they get That's bigger. Not true. It goes, no, it's not true. They lie to us. I don't to wanna us. ruin anybody's <laughs> life out there, you know, cause it does get a little better, but it yeah. just changes really. And that's exactly right. It's an evolution. The kinds of things that they need from us evolve. Mm -hmm. So no, they might not need us in physical ways the same way that we had to play interference between their hands and the electric socket <laughs> or the fireplace, you know, right. so they might not need us in those kinds of ways, but they need us in different kinds of ways. And emotionally is often the biggest of all of them. But as they're figuring out who they are, they need us to be as stable as we can be in the process because they're just little spinning tops, mm -hmm. you know, discovering mm -hmm. the world. But when we know where we're, we're we are and we're consistent about those things it's profoundly helpful in the reduction of stress us as parents we know what the expectations are and then as children knowing what those expectations are so we use an ABC rule in our house okay no matter how old you are every kid who comes in the door knows the same rules and it's a plus B plus C equals D a is attitude we often talk about the fact that people do things for people they like we wish everybody was equal in how they treated everyone, but it's not true. The fact is, when you have a positive attitude, you make it easy for people to like you, to enjoy being around you. You're teachable in school. So many teachers will tell you they've got br brilliant kids, but the attitudes make a world of a difference in their ability to be effective reaching some of the kids sometimes. So it's really helpful to teach your children the positive benefits of having a good attitude about things in life. You know, there's so many quotes out there about life is more about your attitude towards it than the things that you're going through. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that we teach our kids attitude matters. Then B, 
And it is, you're right. I mean, it is, it's not just because we want you to have a good attitude, but if, if someone is closed off and angry, yep. they're not hearing. No. And they're not communicating as effectively. Absolutely. Because of that. And when we meet people like that, think of what your natural reaction is to those people. Right. And you could be a people person. This is what you do all the time. You mm -hmm. deal with people all the time. But you recognize the difference between how nice it is to deal with someone with a good attitude and versus dealing someone with dealing with someone with a bad attitude. Right. It brings out I am more willing Absolutely. to be accommodating Absolutely. if the other person is too. Absolutely. And, and it does become more of an exchange. Okay, so A is attitude. A is attitude. B is books. When you're a kid, your job is school. Now, despite what people like to tell you that, you know, just enjoy your childhood, that's lovely, and we want you to. But education is the gateway to opportunity. School matters. So it's important that our kids understand that your job from 8 o'clock in the morning, if that's when school starts, to 3 o'clock when it ends, is school. Make sure that you are giving complete effort to that. And when you get home, you need to get your homework done. And before we start talking about all the other things, the social media, the YouTube, the television, the games, you need to make sure that you're doing your homework and that's been done properly. You've taken time to review if you don't have homework, because my son is classic for, I don't have any homework. <laughs> homework means I don't have anything written due tomorrow. Exactly. <laughs> and he really I believes don't have a that. Project due Friday. He really believes or I that. I don't have a test to study for. And Thursday night, yes. Yes. when the project's due Friday, he said, Mom, can you swing by Walmart and get me a poster board? <laughs> okay, dude, no. That's not how this needs to work. Right. So right. it's very important that we understand mm -hmm. your job is school. So you need to make sure you're doing the appropriate things, keeping us informed of what needs to be done. Developmentally appropriate, of course. At 12, what I expect from you is different than what I expect from you at 18, getting ready to leave for college. Right. But there should be a measure of personal responsibility that is taking place through that process. So taking care of your books, that is your job. Make sure that you are giving 100% to school. And if a C is your 100%, I can accept that. But I cannot accept a C if you've only given 75%. That's if not If it reflects work. work that wasn't turned in. Absolutely. Or that you didn't prepare for. Absolutely. Gotcha. So we want to make sure that they understand that books matter. Education is paramount. In our house, because I have a son who has special needs medically, the, we have B squared for him. We do books and body. Be body smart. He has to pay attention to the things that he needs. He happens to be a juvenile diabetic. So we have to pay attention to, do we check numbers before we ate? Did we make sure that we counted our carbs? Do we make sure that we cover? He has three C's where that's concerned. Count, cover, and check. So we make sure that those things are done. So he knows he has a double job, but it's still personal responsibility. We want to be brilliant and we need to be healthy. So for him, he has a little bit extra. Mm -hmm. And then we move on to the next part, and that's C. C is chores. Ah. If you live in this house, you should be contributing in some way. When you step out into this world, we want you to be an active contribu contributor to your community. And in order to foster the idea that you have to give something back in an environment where you receive so much without even realizing it sometimes, we have to foster those things at home. So even though you weren't responsible for how that dish ended up in the sink, even though it wasn't your day to put the dog food in the dog bowl, that's what you're going to do because we add to the team. You are part of a team. So doing your chores, having some assigned responsibilities in the house is essential to teaching personal responsibility for kids. Essential. So we say A plus B plus C equals D. D is you get to do what you want. Don't ask me to do what you want if you've done none of the others. It's not enough to just be a good student because your attitude matters and whether or not you're contributing as a human being. And you can see it in colleges. You have a student getting ready to head off to college. Mm -hmm. They want a, re a well-rounded child. They don't just want you to be brilliant. They want to know what you're going to add to this campus. Well, their balance between those other elements, that's part of developing the whole person, being a active contributor. So make sure that that attitude is good. Make sure that you're taking care of the books. And if you have a special needs kid, you're taking care of your body. And then see, are you doing your chores? And then you get to ask me for what you'd like to do, but not before. Now, how does this work? I assume you communicate it very differently when they were little, mm -hmm. and, and you maybe back off a little. Maybe you just have to say, check off A, B, and C now. Exactly. And not have to go through the details. But how does someone, let's say, 
this is a system that I just heard you explain, and, mm -hmm. and I want to bring it home. I want to apply it. So what's the easy way to yeah. apply it? Well, I mean, we all have us mommies in particular, not to say the dads, you don't do your part, but us mommies in particular, we spend a lot of time in the development of those things for our kids. So being able to sit down with your kids and say, listen, that attitude you had yesterday, that's not going to work. There are certain expectations in every house about how people should conduct themselves, particularly our little people. So saying to them the importance of having a good attitude about what it is that you need to do matters. And that's very simple for everyone to do relative to their value system. Then books, where that's concerned, talking about very simply, I need to know that you're giving your best effort. Mm -hmm. And then when chores are concerned, having a chore list. What is it That's that what you I was need say. to do? Do they need to be written down? Is that one thing? Mm -hmm. I mean, when we're, we started talking about reducing stress. And right. so I think tying this back to the stress reduction is that you don't have to say the same things over and you over. You don't have to because it's clear expectations. Whenever you have expectations of something, you need to make sure you've explained what those are in order to get success. So it's very important that those things are laid out for our kids and give room for them to ask questions about it also. Well, mom, do you mean this or dad, do you mean that when you say chores? Do you mean this or that when you say books? Clear, clarifying those things early on is essential to the success of the system. But the stress reduction is once you've developed it, and you're consistent about oh, it. Oh, I knew you were going to throw that in. That big word. <laughs> and that's it, hard, you know, on those nights when I'm like too tired to fight. Mm -hmm. Really? Really? <laughs> I could take the trash out faster than I could argue with you Understood. about getting it to the curb. I totally get it. And I am a clean freak. So after you've cleaned up, I go behind you and clean again. <laughs> I know. But the fact is we've got to let our kids do it. Because as long as we do it for them, we handicap them in ways, especially when it comes to personal responsibility. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to send somebody out into the world who's just going to be a taker. You want to send someone out into the world that's going to be a giver also. And in order to do that, we have to hold them accountable at home. So sometimes it's not convenient, but it is important. So we have to be consistent about it to the best of our ability. Nobody's perfect. Nobody's perfect. And it's okay, we all get tired sometimes, and we don't want to be super mom or super dad, but to the best of our ability, we want to be consistent because kids require consistency in order to be successful. So what are the big pitfalls that you have found in working with, with parents who have begun to implement this system? What, where do people have the hardest time? Consistency. Always. I see that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is not, the system itself is very easy. I mean, when you talk about attitude, books and chores, that seems very easy. But you can't constantly move the goalpost. So today, attitude's expected to be this, but tomorrow it's something different. Today, chores are this, tomorrow it's something different. You have to establish what your baseline is going to be. Now, it's appropriate to shift those things up progressively, because right. we were talking about the age expectations and the developmental process. But it still does not change the fact that we have to be clear at each respective level what we want from our kids. So the toughest thing is consistency because that's the part we control. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a little more challenging sometimes. But once you and get it. And clear communications for people who aren't used to it, mm -hmm. that, um, you know, whether it's writing down or explaining that expectation, it, that can be hard when you're not, when that isn't your natural your normal. style. Oh, agreed, 100%. And getting to where we want is not always a linear process. It's not always a direct <laughs> line. It's so Sometimes it zigzags. Yeah, yeah. But as long as we're moving forward, that's still a good thing. Let yourself off the hook about being perfect with it all. Let yourself off the hook about having to get it down in a week, two weeks, two months. That's not the point. And that reduces your stress too. Also, because you, you we can't. tend to want to be super women. Sure. We want to get it's it right. It's like having a perfectly clean house every minute of the day. If Absolutely. that's your expectation, your stress level's through the roof right Oh, no there. question about it. Absolutely. And because you have so many other things that you're trying to do mm -hmm. and trying to do them spectacularly. And I heard once someone say that as a mom, if you have to be a mom, a wife and or a mom a partner and a professional you get to pick two because you only get to do two out of the three really well at a given time my, that, my son told me that actually he had four because the other one was friends really? and it was basically I, I can't remember who he said said it but you you can't keep all four burners going something will <laughs> boil something over or going burn to out. fail yeah, guaranteed you, it's very hard to do all those it is true and and knowing that you can't do it all 
changes the amount of stress that you experience. Mm -hmm. Because as long as I believe I can do everything, then you get all the shoulds. I should be doing this and I should be doing that and I should know this and I should know that. And that's just unnecessary pressure that is unduly put on because it's Mm self-imposed. You can control how much pressure you put yourself under. You may not be able to control the kind of pressure that comes exterior. To, the, to you, but you can control what you put on yourself. So it's important, particularly as mommies, who also work and also have a life, and also that we don't try to do everything perfectly at once. Do what you can do at the best level you can and, and sleep well at night. It's okay. It really is okay. And it helps. If you if you get that rest and if you forgive yourself mm. and if mm. you reduce that stress level, you have a lot more energy the next day and the day after. Oh, absolutely. It will age slower. <laughs> <laughs> and that's important. It matters for us as women. No question about it. So there, there are things we can do. And there are simple ways to be able to plug in with our kids too. Because sometimes we have to parent on the fly. You know, it's in the car on the way to the game. It's in the car on the way to the grocery store. We have to be able to find quick ways to do things. Mm -hmm. And I have a real simple one that's very, very quick. Okay. I call it pit, peak, punch. Tell me what the pit of your day is. The thing that really wasn't great. Okay. Tell me what the peak of your day is. The thing you enjoyed the most. And then tell me a punch. Punch is kind of like something juicy. It might be, some people get offended when you say the word gossip, so please use a different word if you don't like the gossip word, but punch in the sense that something that was interesting to your kid that may have nothing to do with you, with you may have nothing to do with them. Because if they notice it, it mattered to them, even if they weren't a part of the process. Mm-hmm. So you make a mental check note, hey, so-and-so's kid was in trouble yesterday, well, is that the same kid you want your kid to go to the party with? tomorrow. So that kind of information can be valuable as a parent. So Pit Peak Punch allows for quick ways to plug in with your kid on the fly. And did they get used to that and yes, then they they're do. better at it. It's yes, a very hard thing when you first try to start. Something, I mean, especially yeah. if you have a boy, what did you do today in school or tell me something good. Mm-hmm. Uh. Right. <laughs> It's Drive true. carpool and have a girl in the carpool if you want information. That's my, my so, big So, so true. <laughs> it is the raising girls and raising boys, totally different experiences. Well, now we need to wrap up on this topic, sure. but I'm going to give you a chance to throw in any last thing or, in fact, so I don't have to. I'm going to ask you to go through that A, B, C, D thing sure. one more time just so people remember. Absolutely. A plus B plus C equals D. Attitude plus books plus chores equals D. You get to do what you want. Simple structure. Now I'm going to say something. That works for grown-ups too. It does. You know, instead of books, it becomes your job. Absolutely. But, but you get through those things you have to do. Absolutely. In order to, to have time for the things the that you want to do and the things yes. that you want to do. Absolutely. It makes so much sense, doesn't it? Though? Yes. Thank you so much, Albion. Oh, totally. Thank you so much, Robin. And I hope you've learned about reducing stress in your parenting and in your life by setting some simple guidelines and priorities. And um, I hope you've enjoyed this. We will be back with Albion for more tips later. Thank you for watching.